store maybe early level 6 or a smoke rotation from Chen so that the quad will actually be dominating the lane. That will be the two key things that we'll be looking for in the game. I feel like this is the game where we're going to see Arteezy have the l maybe the least help he's had all tournament yeah. or very close to it because generally when they pick like a shadow fiend bristleback they'll get s a puck or something that can tempo yeah, control that from that the offline that, that's how i feel mm. that opens up a lot of opportunity for the chan to actually make a smoke rotation towards the shadow fiend and right they now. have a hero that in theory can dominate shadow fiend now in yes. theory we get solo killed by Shao Eight Shadow Fiend. Yep. So yeah, that's there is the potential for misplay here as he well. He made a mistake, right? So but that yeah. can happen. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to go into game two of IG versus yeah. Secret, oh and God. as before, we're not going to be casting it. It's going to be Ben Merlini Wu and David God Sparker. Guys, take us away. Welcome everybody to game two of IG versus Secret. Gods here, joining by Merlini. Secret so far undefeated at the Dota 2 Asia Championship. Is this the draft? Is this the game where they get their first loss? Looks like a better draft than last game, as our analyst desk was uh, talking about. And I think the Knicks man is, it, I mean, it's just really good against Quap in general. They didn't even have to set up for Storm, Dusa, but of course the Storm, decent laner versus Brood. We'll see how it works out for them. Yeah, I wonder how much IG were caught up by surprise by this Brood pick. Generally, it's been Zai playing the Brood, but every once in a while it's S4, and they don't didn't seem too well equipped for handling a Brood. Um, as mentioned, the Chen in the jungle, not really a hero that can offer support, but Storm, not bad. Especially once you get to mid to late game, it's really hard for Brood to be off on your own, kind of pushing out the lanes when you've got a Ball Lightning, maybe a gem on the Storm, and lots of ways of catching out the Brood with a, a Storm yeah. Ball Lightning. Slardar and Storm, just two really good heroes at killing the Brood. All right, well, we'll introduce our two teams here. In game two, it's IG trailing 1-0. We're going to have Ferrari 430 on the Storm Spirit, June on the Queen of Pain, Jizbug playing the Witch Doctor, Chuan on the Chen, leaving Luo in the offlane this game on the Doombringer. For the team secret side, Zai going to be on the Broodmother, drops on Essential to block the pool camp. Kuro going to be on the Earthshaker. It's going to be Enigma being played by Puppy in the Jungle. Arteezy on the Shadow Fiend gets himself a Bounty Rune as well. And finally, S4 on the Bristleback going to be heading towards the top lane. So something we're seeing more and more teams do, which is like, have their supports go for the block, and then their mid hero, Arteezy in this case, actually gets a bounty rune. This definitely gives him a, a nice little boost in the mid lane, a bit of extra gold gets him a, cl a faster bottle, just a faster level 2 as well, and does give him a bit of an edge over the Storm Spirit. He varies his build a lot, too. Sometimes he goes, oh. Oh wow, the Kuri is right behind as well. Luckily the Kuri doesn't get caught out here. Arteezy... Not throwing out razors just yet. I believe he's gone for the Necromaster, and Ferrari just completely body blocked. Only barely survives. Is he'd gone razors? That's a first blood. He uh, usually goes razor level one. Yeah. He also, I usually does not uh, get a wraith band at the start. So switching I'm things up. That's actually <laughs> switching things up. And the one game where they get, they yeah. would have got a first blood off of that. That would have been huge if they got that kill. And here comes the Chen support. Wild Wing in the way, and that's going to be a tornado. Giving Arteezy some issues here. He's going to immediately raise up the creep wave and look to just handle uh, handle it with uh, some just defensive play in the mid lane. For bottom lane, the Brood doing pretty well against the Queen of Pain, Witch Doctor lane. Not much they can do against the Brood for the time being. They actually put the Queen of Pain against the Brood. Do you feel like this is the way to go as opposed to the Storm there? Mm. I mean, I think both of them can do okay. I think Storm fares a little bit better. Well, rest in peace, Storm Spirit. Arteezy gets the first blood in middle lane. And, well, that just happened. <laughs> that is not the start you're hoping for if you're IG after going down 1-0 uh, in this best of three series. The Fissure comes back to bite him in the ass. He wasn't able to top himself off. I didn't actually see that kill, though. It's all right. Neither did Wepus. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, we'll see, the Storm Spirit once again come back to mid lane. It feels like Queen of Pain was the more natural mid laner. Slightly better lane dominator against the Shadow Fiend. Also, it feels like Storm is maybe more well equipped for dealing with Spiderlings compared to a Queen of Pain. So I'm definitely a bit surprised by the way IG Maybe June's this. not a, s a Storm player. Hmm. That's also an option. Yeah. I, I, mean, I feel like Jude, I guess if you wanted Jude on the quad, maybe you even send him mid, even if he's not really normally your mid player. Mm -hmm. The guy's 8k MMR, he can play any lane. <laughs> I, I believe in his mid play. I believe. He yeah. also went for a Shadow Strike build too, against yep. a Brood, which is also a little bit unusual, but it looks like Zai's not able to put out any pressure yeah. with the Sentry already out in lane. Yeah, Zai's just sitting in the side here, looking to use those spider links whenever possible to... Get him a couple CS here. Actually, last thing, not too bad with them. Has got himself at least a couple of CS here. And now Arteezy at mid almost gets brought down by Ferrari. 
20 HP there, as uh, the magic stick actually saves his life. He's going to have to go back to base and heal up. We'll buy a TP scroll to get back in. And that gives Earthshaker a bit of XP in this mid lane. So Ferrari almost gets a kill from that TZ. Very uh, strange, but I mean, I guess the, the, the kill on the Storm with the, the Earthshaker is one thing, but Storm almost getting a kill on that TZ. That was somewhat unexpected. Yeah, right before his bottle comes out, he uh, opted for an early Bassy instead of uh, into an Aquila rather than the bottle, even though he had the gold for it. One point in Shadow Strike will prevent Brood from traversing over the trees, though, so I can definitely see the value yep. in that. Although, generally, you think of uh, Brood requiring a lot of AoE to deal with. Yeah, and Brood already has Soaring, so it feels like all in all, Seeker getting a lot more out of these lanes. Just looking at the CS, most of these lanes going really well for them. The Shadow Feed, the Bristleback getting CS, Brood doing okay in bottom lane, and then you've got the the jungler. You've got the Enigma who's going to jungle a lot faster than Chen. We've already seen Chen sending creeps towards the middle lane. Enigma's the highest hero level in the game. He's hit level 5. Arteezy only just now hits level 5. It, this is very reminiscent of some past TIs where if you don't pressure and shut down Enigma in the jungle, you're fe essentially versing an extra core hero on the other team. Yes. His I'm Enigma form is like ridiculously win. fast. I, I mean, he usually gets level 6 by 5 minutes. This is going to be even faster than that. Four and a half minutes. I think this camp here will get him his level six. That is, yeah, that is just absurdly fast. Well, take note. Ready for the four minute black hole? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's going to be level six before storm is. He could just smoke mid with uh, pick up his boots and a smoke and go mid and black hole and kill the storm spirit. I feel like that's well worth it if he can make a play like that. But but now he picks up a smoke. Yeah, Earthshaker just sitting behind mid lane. They maybe just looking for a kill on Ferrari without something such as a smoke. What's IG's plan here? Because it feels like these lanes are going really poorly for them. All three secret core heroes getting farmed, and then Enigma is just topping the levels. Mid lane for Rauri, double raised, and he doesn't have... Oh, he's going to use the tree to block Arteezy! Oh, that looked like a p possible kill there on the Storm Spirit, but that single tree fogging Arteezy couldn't get the last right click off that was needed. <laughs> nice a kill attempt, but... <laughs> Oof, gotta be careful with those tangos. Yeah, exactly. No, one of those. Yeah, as as a mid lane on the radiant side, you're often like, oh, let's just tango anyways. But uh, any random tree, but he cut down a few too many there. Also, Luo's getting owned in the off lane. As far as net worth is like a thousand yeah. above the doom. Is this a lane that doom can really do better than this in, or do you feel there's, it's very one sided? No one, no one helping him out, or no one helping the uh, the bristle back out. It's a, what, Earthshaker and an Enigma. I think yep. if Earthshaker comes, he can just get a TP and TP out. Oh, Luo. But he can't put any aggression out in this lane. Well, Luo very close to a lot of enemy heroes. The fish are going to miss, and that's going to actually save Luo's life, probably. Arteezy was rotating, as was the Enigma. But it's IG going for their first gank of the game. They're looking for the Brood. Their Dust is going to be off the mark. The Sentry also off the mark. Zai says that was a bit too easy, and Chizbug is looking dead here. There's too many Spiderlings. That's a huge cluster, but they're not going to go in for the kill. Actually, nope, they are. They're going to go over the trees here. The nuke beam gets used as well, and Zai finds a kill at bottom. This is what Broods do best. They love these dual lanes with squishy supports. It's just not much that IG can do. Yeah, I mean, a good Broodmother player sees opportunities like that, and I mean, it's just so incredibly difficult to deal with a Brood if you don't have a self-sufficient soloer versus it. And I mean, the sport's just g gunning for kills, but it's nearly impossible without a Storm or a Co-op to lead it off. It's such like a let's hope this works kind of play. Like smoking Our towards a brood when brood has like 500 movement speed and webs is just uh, maybe it works, but chances are it probably doesn't. Top tower is under attack. Well, this Radiant is going disastrously for IG to say the least here in the early game. Seven minutes in, their T1 tower under pressure. Everyone on the secret side is farming. The only one doing remotely well is this Queen of Pain on the IG safe lane, but. Even that, I feel, is just not really enough out of, for IG here in the early game. I still think they can maybe put a lot of pressure with Storm and Queen of Pain in the mid game. Their mobility is really, really high, and on top of that, they have the Chen send back uh, for the Storm, so he can make even riskier plays than normal. Yeah. The Chen Storm works really nice together. By the way, this does not work really nicely. Luo just runs in, super aggressively trying to keep the top T1 tower alive, and feeds away a kill. Earthshaker will get the last hit on the T1 tower as Chizbug gets back to safety, but. It's just not what they were hoping for. Another big spiraling army is here. Queen of Pain goes to throw a dust and more dust and sentries wasted. They can't get this brood. This is a lot of money investment, time investment, and 
Brood is just loving it here in this bottom lane. Now look how far up uh, Arteezy is pushing too, into a Storm. Generally, as a, as a Shadow Fiend, you're like a little bit scared, especially without Treads of a Storm solo killing you, but Arteezy is not feeling any pressure at all. Yeah. And Zai is creating so much space in the bottom lane, S4 creating space in the top lane. And from the Aesir's point of view, they're not even looking to create space, they're just looking to farm. They're farming super aggressively in all three lanes just because of how hard to kill all these heroes are. Kuro's done a great job on his Earthshaker, always offering kind of defensive support, and even has managed to find himself some arcane boots. Luo in a somewhat dangerous position. Hmm, has to, yeah, one Fissure followed up by some Goose Bam could see him going down here. There just isn't really much good TP rotation. The Queen of Pain, probably the one hero who's looking like she may be well equipped to deal with the gank. We'll see Chuan walk in. The Dust comes out, sees Arteezy as well, but Arteezy going to look to turn and race. They killed the Brood nice and fast, but June, careful not to go down here. Arteezy going to get caught out as well. It's the TPing Storm Spirit. They get both SF and Brood. SF was there trying to use the Brood as bait, but it was IG who had the far superior numbers. That's a super risky play. I mean, ganking the Brood lane with an invis... <laughs> Chances are that <laughs> if they have sentries or dust there for the Brood, he they're going to have just, it for the SF. He was just outside of the sentry range, but still, that's a, that's a high-risk play. Yeah, that was a huge pickup for IG. They needed that so badly as well with how this early game has gone. I still feel like they're playing from heavily playing from behind. When Puppy's mech comes up, which is going to do so in the next minute, it's going to be really difficult to defend towers and take objectives. Compare that to Chuan, who's still got a good kind of Radiant six to one thousand gold head. left on his mech. It's going to be tricky to fight into. Yeah, I think Chuan's uh, Chen hasn't had that much impact either. His net worth is like half of Enigmas right now, which is I mean, half. We're talking about half in between junglers at nine thirty. He wasn't able to really control the Shadow Fiend uh, in middle. Um, and of course he doesn't have his mech yet. Ooh, S4. S4, one stun, there's going to be a second stun as well. Ferrari has a pull still available. Arteezy comes in, throws a couple of razors. Can they even kill off S4? They're going to use the Chen Hand of God here. Storm forced the ball lightning out of there. They just couldn't do enough damage. And the tower gets denied by the Chen. Storm meanwhile needs to get out of here. Bottom lane though, it's a brood committing suicide. He gets the deny using his spiderlings on the Shadow Strike. Oh my god, what a... Disaster for IG, they just can't catch a break here. <laughs> he even he kills the witch doctor and then denies himself. Like Oh my Zai is just making plays. He's creating space. That's where I, I feel like Arteezy doesn't need to go down there when he gets an invisory. Just keep on doing your thing in the mid lane. Zai is doing just fine at bottom. June trying trying to deal with these spiderlings, but Queen of Pain takes two screams to kill those. Yeah. Well, Secret now even going to bring the Enigma down bottom lane. With this mech timing, they are ready to make something happen. They're actually pinging out Roshan here, and with a DD rune, they're going to have the Enigma Eidolons as well. Yeah, they, they can summon some more Eidolons if they need to. Roshan could go down pretty quickly, but here comes IG smoked up, looking to contest this one. They have really good observer rewards around the area. They pretty much have this entire area well, with vision. The smoke is going to bypass that for the initial. But this Arteezy gets out. Up. Oh, they've seen Arteezy now. This is really looking... Well, I'm not that bad. They've got S4, and S4 has got a Vanguard here. He's very tanky on this bristle bag. The question is, can Arteezy go for Roshan? Meanwhile, Tron on the high ground gets caught up by the Zai Brood! Death from above! Sean may not have arachnophobia before this match, but it's quickly coming upon him. As Secret just going to march forward with the Bristleback. The Sonic Wave goes through, doesn't do enough damage to S4. The mech also healing everyone up. They've also got the bonus armor from this, and IG just getting zoned out. It's the Brood also getting kill after kill. Lures rotate in, doesn't have mana for a Doom. Oh dear. Doom picks up a Midas now, but I think possibly Roshan secured. Maybe Secret going to be a bit antsy about this one and just decide to back off. Nope, they say let's commit to this. Let's go for it. Round two. No quap ult. They, they can't go into the black position. hole as well. Yeah. Mech will be up soon, so IG just going to look to get a tier 1 tower at mid in exchange, which is probably the best they can get, if that. I don't even know if they're going to kill this tier 1 mid tower in time. Again, they have superior positioning when fighting at Roshan, which generally doesn't happen. Generally, you're like inside the pit, everyone's clumped up around that area, but since they have vision, they can push out with Bristleback so that the enemy team is actually in this choke point and then they can wrap around with Broodmother and actually yep. force IG into a terrible position. So even though Secret is attempting Roshan, they're the ones with the upper hand and, and positioning and it just comes to show their experience as fighting together as a team. That was just, yeah, in insane as you said. Even having Zai on the Brood in the Radiant Jungle, like on that high ground cliff, solo killing the supports, because that's where the supports want to see. At the back line, just out of trouble, but the Brood just instantly kills them. 
it was just perfect execution. Secret, not missing a beat here in the main event. They were undefeated in the group stage and looking to continue that here. Brood top of the net worth chart with Shadowfiend and Bristleback shortly behind and IG's draft just not getting the job done. Too many summons to deal with. And generally against a brood, you want two heroes, I would say, that want that are that can be on dedicated brood duty. And Storm Spirit doesn't quite fit that bill because he can't one shot the uh, broodlings. Neither can Queen of Pain. So I mean, brood just left rampant in yeah. the bottom lane. And it feels like these Doom picks from IG aren't working out well at all. Doom is not a hero that can do much early on. It feels like Doom is much more like a, a late game kind of farmer in some ways where. Like, sure, your Doom cast time and just the ability to not be able to really solo kill heroes with Doom until you get Ag Scepter really makes Doom kind of a ineffective offline compared to like a less farm dependent offline. Like we're seeing the Clockworks, the Batriders just do a lot more in general. I mean, I guess they wanted a solution to, I don't know, some of these BKB heroes, but yeah. <laughs> it hasn't oh, even gotten the to the smoke from behind, they're going to catch out Chizbuck first. The Sonic Wave doesn't really even do much damage here with the mech from Puppy negating most of it. They kill off the Witch Doctor, they want more though. Ferrari's invis in the side, Doom onto S4, but that's really a non-factor for the tanky Bristleback. There is a Sentry Ward place. Mm, they see they Ferrari. Question is, can they lock him down? Artis is pretending he hasn't been spotted. They're going to fission now, turn and raise him, force him out of the invis, but... I thought they were going to black hole him. Yeah, as did I. I saw Puppy, like, winding up his arms, but no. If he was closer, I imagine they would have used it for the solo kill. Bottom lane, by the way, Chuan looking mighty, mighty dead. One more nuke in two seconds here. Chuan goes down, but they're going to use the Witch Doctor ultimate. Zai needs to get out of this vision here. He's going to go down, it looks like. One last Witch Doctor death, death Ward hit, and just barely they kill the Brood there. Not quite worth it in the end for him. Nice Sentry Ward behind the T2 tower. I think Brood thought he could get out of range of the tower, but the Sentry was there as well. However, it will not come for free. I, just Brood, yeah, Brood, it's a big kind of rubber band effect where you've got a 7k net worth Brood giving away a kill, but at the end of the day, that rubber band exists because Secret is so far ahead. Getting a tier 2 tower and a support kill in exchange for the Brood Radiance seems perfectly reasonable for the Secret attack. squad right now. And now that he is an Orchid, like these these heroes that should be able to d somewhat deal with the Brood just can't. Like Queen of Pain and Storm Spirit with no items, no Orchid up on Queen of Pain. She doesn't even have her second Oblivion staff. Storm Spirit, not even one Oblivion staff completed. Like, forget about your BKBs. <laughs> Their orchids aren't even going to be online. At this point, Ferrari may just have to go a different direction. I would even like say something like a Yule Scepter just to get out of the orchid if you're if you're worried about getting silenced and killed. They're losing the entire Chen Creep army as the Enigma invades the Radiant Jungle with the Earthshaker, and they might have to rush BKB because of the Yule Shadow Fiend. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many things that they they can't deal with right now. How are they going to kill Bristle if they build defensive items? Well. This is worrisome. Secret now looking to go from tower to tower. 16 minutes in. This is looking even more one-sided than game one at this point. Secret just running, well, the IG running out of options. Secret just, uh, um, this lean, mean, killing machine. Plowing down through the IG towers. Only one T2 tower remains at the bottom lane, and I imagine Brood will make short work of that one. Again, they have the right mix of items. Of course, Enigma getting the mech as usual. Mech, I think, a very often overlooked item in this particular patch. 225 mana, definitely worth it. On top of that, they always have uh, Aquila slash Basilius on their team, too, to make these push a little bit easier. Yes. This time it is on uh, the Shadow Fiend instead of their uh, safe laner. Just always a good spread of items. And Secret are just playing so greedy while this far ahead. I think Puppy's farming super aggressively in the Radiant Jungle. You've got Brood at the bottom lane. You have Heroes top, Heroes mid. Meanwhile, IG have to group up. Chen's still looking to just rebuild his neutral army. It, IG just getting nothing out of the map. Brood also picks up a Blink Dagger now, something you don't normally see on a Brood, but considering his start and how much this could maybe help him initiate or even get out of ganks, a nice little pickup nonetheless. Yeah, I like I like Blink, Blink Broods, actually. I mean, Blink is just so good on... So oh, top lane, RTZ winds up. He doesn't get the tough damage to kill off Judy. He's going to get killed in return. <laughs> no! Storm may have killed RTZ, but he died for it. June did survive the combo from the Shadow Fiend. Not high enough level on that Requiem of Souls. As we'll see, uh, a Blink Dagger now purchased by... Well, both Shadow Fiend and Earthshaker. Your hard support Earthshaker, 17 minutes in, has a Blink Dagger with his Arcane Boots. I think you'll be pretty pleased if you're secret. Even more pleased by this 12,000 net worth lead. Mmm, Chen Army plus Echo Slam. It's looking pretty tasty for an Earthshaker game. And Bristle has 1750 HP. You're scoring mass HP with Treads and Sange. 
in the Vanguard. That's why these, even if IG go these more offensive items like Orchids, Bristleback doesn't care if he gets silenced too much. He just is going to tank it up with the damage block from the Vanguard and just in general being really tanky. Top lane, Lua. Uh oh, he's getting caught up by the Yules here, and well. We'll see uh, the support coming in from Puppy. He's not going to get close enough for the Malefus immediately. Lua's on the run. Urshikin nearby, though. We'll be able to blink Fissure to probably cancel this TP. What's Lua going to look to do? He blinks into the trees. Is there a Fissure? He's going to hit it. Lua gets caught out. They just need to get in there now. Another blink coming up in five seconds. They can't actually break through. Lua's going to blink again soon, but he's got no TP I end of the day. Blinks to the west. And it looks like he's just going to be left there. End of the day, you cancel this TP. And you're pretty pleased that he's completely stuck in that top lane and you can go start taking objectives. Dust not going to catch him out immediately. He's on the high ground. He blinks away. Oh, that blink dagger already paying for itself. Secrets farming everywhere. As yep. for in the enemy ancients, the enemy jungle being taken over. IG, they're struggling to get kills. They're struggling to get farm. They don't have any towers down. They have no Roshan control. And they also don't have that great late game. They only just now got a 19-minute mech on your Chen. His net worth, well, even below half of the Enigmas. Well below half of the Enigmas. They're going to smoke, and it looks like that was, well, around that top cliff. That's just a dire sentry, I believe. Okay. So, uh... We'll see what Secret look to do from this one as uh, they make their move down towards the bottom lane. And IG, well, Chuan completely unaware, gets Fissure Block, will get brought down with ease. Nothing he can do about that. And they're going to lose the Chen Creeps as well. This is just looking like game over. They can just go high ground off of this. IG, high ground defense is not the best. Just the Queen of Pain and there's Mech. There's all kinds of items coming out on the Secret side. They are just all so damn tanky. Fissure waiting for the Queen of Pain to land, and they're going to blink in the Urshan. Kakuro goes for the Echo Slam. Ferrari not going to get brought down. Puppy had the Black Hole, didn't go for it. Buyback now from your Queen of Pain. Tier 3 tower taking heavy damage. The Midnight Pulse is going to also deter IG from going in. Glyph now used, but to what avail? It's a full-on defense here as the cast will bounce around. They're going to need a bit more than Coconuts to turn this game around. Great Yule Scepter, he doesn't have the Doom, now he's going to Fissure Block the high ground, Lewis trapped on the low ground! The Death Ward from above though, Ferrari going to get brought down by a Brood, the Orchid with the Insatiable Hunger! Secret of Hunger for one thing, and that's a Game 2 victory here in this best of three as they're looking fantastic to take it. The Mech from Puppy coming soon once this Doom wears off. We'll pop it immediately, and this Tier 3 tower looking in bad shape as the Coconuts come out once more, but... These are not knocking on anyone's heads here. A secret going to keep on bashing away at these racks at bottom lane, and there's just nothing IG can do except what's what's the bottom lane for? That was a great use by Arkeezy. Great reflexes, and of course Kiro with that sick block, and just making it a five v two. I guess maybe a four v two because one guy's doomed. It did help that Witch Doctor could drop the Death Ward and not get it cancelled, but they were so tanky. It's a bristleback. You've got a mech. Well, I guess the mech wasn't used from your Enigma, but Secret could easily just kind of back away from it. And easy racks. Secret, just uh, another day in the office. Yep. Roshan, once again available for them. So, yeah, this this does definitely just feels like Secret doing the business right now. Nothing much to it. A slightly different draft, I'd say, this game in some ways. We haven't seen that much of the Earthshaker from them. The Brew, this is only, I think, the second or third time this tournament. But it's something that teams are going to be increasingly aware of. Much like when you go up against Vici Gaming, those second stage brood bands are very common. I feel like teams are going to have to start doing the same against Secret unless they have a lineup that can actually deal with a brood in lane. Yep, one defensive support, one greedy support, self-sufficient solo laners, recipe for success, okay. and of course a lineup that can easily do Roshan. Yeah. Well, Secret are going to take Aegis and probably look for another lane shortly after. Shadowfiend picks it up, going for a Shadow Blade. Screw BKB, he says, and not... I mean, BKB, useful against these Quop and Storm-type heroes, especially if they get Orchid, but neither of them... Okay, Quop has an Orchid, Storm does not. These Orchids are just coming way too late, and I feel like aren't going to do anything. Oh, uh, Luo in trouble. He's going to get Requiem to the mid lane. Razors to follow. Easy pickoff. And now the push comes. Multiple heroes down the mid lane. Brood in the bottom lane. They're going to ignore the push up top from the Quop and the Storm. Brood even has a BKB back at base, and oh, bottom lane. Brood wants to go in, has found Chuan, but won't actually get the initiation he was after there. The Earthshaker seeing behind him, but space created for this mid lane pushes. Uh, Teezy and Puppy 
Gonna start whacking away on this tier 3 tower. Spiderlings come in as well, and the AoE damage is only really there from a, a Queen of Pain Sonic Wave from afar. Queen of Pain gets close for a Scream, will get brought down. Arteezy blinks into a cast! That is not the blink you are looking for, Artur! He screws over Kuroki, but it's still looking okay for Secret. BKB from Puppy goes walking in, solo black hole on Chizbug. Why the hell not? You've got the game secured, and they're gonna look to go out. Well, I don't know about in style, but at least using some of their spells. First black hole of the game from Puppy. Arteezy's blink to kill off Kuro, though, that was, uh, well, I guess the comic relief, which this game was kind of lacking with how one-sided it's been. Three dead, and IG will GG out. Just complete stomp here. Secret looking like they're just multiple levels above IG right now. They keep bulldozing. That's, that's an ugly, ugly game. I, I thought this series would be closer, you know? IG, one of those teams, they've got some veteran players, you've got... Chuan, who played on, uh, Chuan as well as Ferrari, who played on that TI2 winning team. They had the full, like, they had multiple days to prepare, prepare for this series. They can watch the match footage on Secret. They kind of had a good idea of what Secret were going to pick, but nothing came together. I nothing feel like really their, their openers.